Hey and welcome, I'm Hammy and in this latest exploration of everything Overwatch lore and story related we're taking you on a tour through the lore and easter eggs of Petra as well as some speculation as to what we might learn from it. The new Deer map from Anniversary 2018, Petra has both an awesome real life history as well as some interesting little lore tidbits in the map that may make it significant in the future of Overwatch's lore and story. Time to run you through the map's lore and cool easter eggs and details first a little bit of Petra's real life history. Time code is always in the description below if you want to skip. Located in southern Jordan in the Middle East and known as the Rose City to some because of the colour of the stone it's carved from, Petra was settled as early potentially as 9000 years BC. Part of the Nabataean Kingdom and nomadic Arabic people, the site of Petra was a great strategic site in ancient times. It was close to major trade routes, it was in an easily defensible position, and as a result it became a very prominent trading hub. The first written mention of Petra is when the Greek Antigonids raided it in 312 BC. It became a client state of the Romans, kind of a vassal state, in 1 BC, and lost its independence when it became a fully fledged part of the Roman Empire 100 years later. The Romans continued to carve and grow the city, creating a huge theatre amongst other buildings. However, in the years to come, Petra would lose its significance. Increased amounts of trade instead of by land would go by sea. In addition to this, a noted earthquake in the area in Galilee in 363 caused large sections of Petra to be fatally damaged. The city was abandoned in time and only rediscovered to the wider world in 1812. Known for its strikingly beautiful carved buildings and caves from within the rock, Bedouin tribesmen used to live here until as recently as the 1970s and 80s, until the site was made a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Petra can be accessed from a 1.2k or 3 quarters of a mile gorge, a channel, formed from the actual rock. This is called the Seek. Petra has been seen in loads of pop culture. You probably know it from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Only the Penitent Man Will Pass. It's also been in films like The Mummy Returns, Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen, and in a couple of other games like the Civilization series, and now of course Overwatch. So let's go and have a look around the level and have a look at the Easter eggs and a bit of lore speculation. Okay, as we pan into Petra, the first building we see is actually the very iconic front that you'll see in Indiana Jones. It's a building known as the Treasury. The first thing that strikes our eyes is of course this tent, and we have to have a look at this new logo and symbol that we see not only on the tents but bags and loads of different crates, rations, backpacks and things within the structure. Who is this? Well we'll speculate a little bit on that later. I think it's probably some kind of archaeological or scientific organisation. We do see this logo, it kind of looks like it's got a trowel in the middle which would kind of be apt for an archaeological organisation of some kind, digging things up, doing research, then almost like a W behind it. The next thing we see is an interesting little data pad with an excerpt of some kind of email. Now the email is from H. Faisal, Hamid Faisal, as we'll find out from another computer later in the level. It talks about excavation of the hidden treasure chamber from our recent imaging survey. If there was another method of access in the past, we have not yet discovered it. Thank you for your continued funding of our Petra explorations, ongoing work in Ilios, and the new project in Thailand. Dr. Nasharian Nasharan is eager to begin. With so many sites under threat, your contributions make it possible for us to continue this important work. H. Faisal. Now, this is kind of interesting. We'll go through those different sites and things later, but this tells us a bit about who the people are who are working in this area. I believe that Dr. Nasharon is probably, it looks like a Thai name for my little bit of research, so maybe that's the person ready to get started in Thailand, but we certainly have Hamid Faisal working at this site here in Petra. Now, who is Hamid working with here? Well, there seem to be two chairs over here as well, a couple of people having a look out. There could be more than two people on site, but I reckon there are certainly two named people that we know here. By the way, a little reference there. Petrus Champagne, like the Petrus Act, is named after Bill Petrus, the art director at Blizzard working on Overwatch. So there's a little Easter egg there. For those of you thinking, and I've seen a few of you commenting, oh, the level's called Petra, the act that stopped Overwatch activity happening currently is the Petrus Act. Well, Petra is a real place, and anything called Petras in the game is named after Bill Petrus, including the bubbly. But if we look next to this tent, we see a bag, a bag with a different name on, and this name is Blaze. And who could Blaze be? Well, the name itself has English, French, and Greek origins. There's a Saint Blaze as well, for example. But the origin is most likely, I would imagine, if we're putting two and two together, Greek. And the reason for this is another laptop that we see further on inside Petra. Uh, this one, as well as giving us another different name that we've not seen before, Iwanidis. Um, now, if that's a bad Greek pronunciation, my apologies for that, but conversation between Iwanidis and Hamid Faisal, or Faisal Hamid, talks just a little bit about the logistics of what's going on here. Now, there's no wider spanning Overwatch lore here, bar the fact that they have managed to find three different statues, Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite. 
all three Greek goddesses, and I'll talk a bit more about those later. A lot of people I know like their statue theories and Greek theories when it comes to Overwatch New Heroes. Faisal replies in kind with discoveries, talking about a hidden chamber. It might be a significant find, and there's a narrow opening through which we can perform further excavation. Now, I believe that this is talking about the treasure chamber that we saw mentioned in the email, supposedly to the benefactor of this and other expeditions. And indeed, if you have a little exploring Petra, you can see through this crack in the wall, certainly piles of kind of treasure, a few sort of maybe antique urns and things like that. So maybe this is the hidden chamber that both laptops are talking about. So what could the meaning of any of this be? Well, first things first, the smaller Overwatch maps are not always necessarily big lore pointers. Take Necropolis from last year's anniversary in 2017, for example. The story of that map was that Arna is in hiding there and Soldier is as well. And we saw lots of cool stuff hinting to that. Black Forest was just that, a little piece of the edge of Eichenwalde. And Castillo had the nice factor of being Sombra's little hideout in HQ, as well as the center of where Los Muertos were operating on the edge of Dorado. So these are all little self-contained lore stories, little additions details. Uh, just because that's been the trend in the past though doesn't mean that small things can't have added meaning or there's not some kind of clue in here. So first and most obvious one this logo or new organization. At the very least we have a new company, a new organization, a new institute perhaps and my initial wondering when seeing all of the law in this map was who are these people actually working for and do they know about it? Now, if you take it at face value, it could be some kind of scientific or archeological expedition organization, maybe attached to a museum, a research institute or otherwise, completely legitimate and needing some funding from somewhere, which is why Hamid Faisal is keeping his benefactor updated or benefactors perhaps. Now, if you go for a slightly different or conspiracy-ish kind of angle, but who knows, right? Could they be funded by Talon? They might not know it or they might know it. Now, the reason that I wonder about this is that Hamid's email to the benefactor does sound generally grateful. They mention sites being under threat and vital work continuing. So that sounds like a very sincere thanks for the help making this happen. However, these excavations, whoever Hamid is talking to are clearly rich enough or providing enough money that they can support excavations or archaeological operations at three different sites over in Thailand. I'm guessing that's Ayutthaya, the other recent level that we saw for Overwatch capture the flag, also in Ilios, and then also here in Petra. Now, we kind of think that at the moment Talon are potentially active in Ilios. If you go into the top of the dropship on the ruins stage of Ilios before the match starts, you'll hear Athena mention the possibility of Talon activity in the ruins. Now, Ayutthaya, we don't really see any lore nods or references in there at the moment, unless the level's been updated. And here in Petra, we have a lot more little lore nods and hints. So, who is this mysterious organization with this very, very definite logo that we see all over this level? Are they Indiana Jones style good guys, perhaps slightly vigilante, but with a rich benefactor, an independent kind of organization somehow? Or are they talent sponsored, whether they actually know about it or not? Now, as a second little thought and a little theory that people have entertained for quite some time, uh, Talon and these statues and potential future heroes. Well, people do love these statues. Now, Iwanidis and Hamid in the conversation that they had mentioned three statues. They mentioned Hera, Aphrodite and Athena. Now, we have seen various examples of these goddesses in different places. There are, of course, a couple of statues in Ilios ruins that people have speculated about before and said, oh, a Greek hero is coming. There is, of course, the statue in the courtyard in Chateau Guillard, Widowmaker's home. And also, of course, there is the statue, a matching statue, that is in the Talon HQ in Rialto. Now, remember, of course, that these goddesses in our world today were portrayed in many different statues in many different ways. So having many different statues of Hera, Aphrodite and Athena around the Overwatch world would not be a massive surprise. They don't necessarily have to be linked. The other thing as well is that in Overwatch there are a couple of different kinds of statue model that we've seen repeated in different places, so it might be no more or no less than that. The presence of Greek statues in Petra itself, depending on how you see it, might be a bit strange given that the Romans spent so much time in Petra in our real world, but I remember of course that a Greek invasion of Petra in real history was one of the first recorded mentions of the actual place. So you can pretty much decide either way as to whether you think that these statues should be there or not. So the statues in themselves may not mean anything, but I'm quite interested in these characters who have been name dropped. We potentially have at least two. As I mentioned, if Nesheren is the local Thai researcher, archaeologist or scientist eager to start in Ayutthaya, then we have 
Hamid Faisal and perhaps Blaise Iwanidis. Now, like our friend Emre in Operation White Dome, that teaser that came before Brigitte's announcement, not every name that we see in Overwatch materials is necessarily going to become a hero. We're two years in, after all, of course, at this point. However, it is slowly coming around to the time where we can start thinking about a new hero again. If we go back to last year, Doomfist was accidentally leaked when some build notes in the Overwatch game files accidentally showed Summer Games patch stroke Doomfist release, with Doomfist hitting the PT in early July, after the anniversary is all done, later perhaps in June, we can start thinking maybe of what a new hero could be. Now my theory is that we're going to see a couple of heroes for the rest of this year that somehow move the story forward and that are maybe a little bit more out there than before. Where you've had soldiers, we've had a scientist recently with Moira, we've had Brigitte as well, maybe she's an adventurer, maybe we could have some adventurers or oddities. And if so, then who knows, maybe some of these people with some kind of out there kind of kits could perhaps fall in in some way or another. What do you think of these little nuggets on Petra? Do you have any theories? What do you think that Blaze, what do you think that Hamid Faisal could be up to? Do let me know in the comments. Do you think they're anything to do with talent? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks very much for tuning in to this Overwatch lore tour of Petra and its Easter eggs and history as well. If you like Overwatch lore and story, please check out all of my analysis and explanations in these playlists here. Do subscribe, like and comment if you enjoyed and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon who help me keep making these videos. If you'd like to get involved and support the channel, do check out patreon.com forward slash Hammy. Cheers for tuning in. I've been Hammy. Take it easy.